This is the first section of chapter 8, the binomial expansion, and this is on Pascal's triangle. Now, Pascal's triangle, and we'll have a look at it in a moment, helps us to expand brackets. Now, brackets where this power is like more than cubed. For example, if I were to expand this, x plus y, all to the power of 5, I'd have to write five sets of brackets out, and I'd have to manually multiply these brackets that's going to take a long time and if i make a single mistake the whole answer is going to be wrong now if this was x plus y squared that's no problem or even x plus y cubed that's still not too bad but if it was x plus y or any two things added together to like the power four that's when it starts to take time or even if it's like power seven or eight it's going to take ages to multiply this out and there are patterns which we can use to help us to expand things like this quickly. Now, what patterns are there? Well, I've actually worked this out and expanded this x plus y, y to the power of 5 and simplified it. We're going to look for any patterns that we see. But the first thing, do you notice we start with x to the power of 5, which is that power, and then in each subsequent term, it goes down x to the power of 4, x to the power of 3, x to the power 2, that's x to the power 1, and then in the last one, it's actually the same as x to the power 0. So this first term here, we start with the power and we go down. Right, so just stated that here. Okay, how about the other term, the y? Well, that does the opposite. It's got y to the power 5 up here. Now, there's no y at the beginning, so actually, what I've got here is the same as y to the power 0. So it goes uh, y to the power 0, y to the power 1, y squared, y cubed, y to the power 4, y to the power 5. So with the second term, it starts at the 0 and goes up in powers. So again, I've just stated this here. It's interesting to note, actually, that in every term the sum of the powers is 5 so it's the same as this power here so that might be a useful check 5 5 4 plus 1 3 plus 2 2 plus 3 1 plus 4 5 plus 0 now the last thing we haven't looked at is where do these numbers come from I've got like one lot of the first term so let's say we've got one here then I've got five lots of the second term 10 lots of this, 10 lots of this, 5 of this, and then 1 lot of the last term. 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And this is where Pascal's triangle comes in. It's a very easy triangle to produce, and we can use the triangle to get these coefficients. So let's have a look at Pascal's triangle. So the name uh, Pascal's triangle comes from a French mathematician called Blaise Pascal. Not only was he a mathematician, he was an inventor, philosopher, writer, physicist, and a Catholic theologian. So he had lots of things that he did. Now, how do we get Pascal's triangle? Well, we start with one at the top. It's basically a triangle of numbers. Then we have ones here. So a bit like Fibonacci sequence, we have some starting numbers. And then for each row underneath, we add the sum of the numbers above it to get the next row. So it's always going to be a one on the outside of this triangle. Then I add one and one together to get two. And there's going to be a one at this edge. So the triangle sort of goes like this, spreads out. Right, for the next row, um, again, one's on the outside. Then I add these two numbers together, one plus two to get three. And then I add 2 plus 1 to get 3. See how it's like symmetrical. Okay, right, let's move down to the next row. Again, it's going to have 1s on the outside, like this. We add the 1 and the 3 together to get 4. 3 and 3 to get 6. And a 3 and 1 to get 4. Okay, let's go down to the next row. Again, 1s on the outside. And we will have 5, 1 plus 4, 10, 4 plus 6. 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1. Five. Now, do you recognize those numbers? Those were the coefficient of this. This wasn't it? One, five, ten, 
10, 5, 1. So we got this when we expanded basically x plus y to the power 5. If I was to expand x plus y to the power 4, I would have got these coefficients here. I would have 1 of something, 4 of something, then 6, 4, and then 1. x plus y cubed here, x plus y squared. I suppose this is just x plus y to the power 1. And then here, x plus y to the power 0, which is just 1. OK, so this Pascal's triangle, it's used to get the coefficients in an expansion. Everything else we got from the patterns, but the coefficients, let's just highlight those. So these numbers here, this we get from Pascal's triangle. There are other ways of doing it, but we start by using Pascal's triangle. And notice that for the x to the power 5, it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It was the sixth row. For x to the power 4, it's the fifth row. x cubed, it's the fourth row. So for expanding x plus y to the power n, we will need the n plus oneth row. Or if you look for the second number in, that will tell you, if that matches up with the power, that tells you, right, that's the row you're looking for. So the second number in, these numbers here, will tell you, right, okay, there's a five there, second number in. So this, these are the, going to be the coefficients for uh, x to the power five expansion. Or you can say one, two, three, four, five, six row for uh, power five expansion. Example one, use Pascal's triangle to find the expansions of these here. Okay, so I've got Pascal's triangle drawn out here. So for part A, I want the row where I see the three as the second one. So it's going to be this row here. It's the fourth row. So these are going to be the coefficients for any expansion to the power three. Right. So we know that the first term is going to start as x cubed and go down. And then the two y is actually going to go up to 2y all cubed. So we're going to write everything out and then we we'll simplify it. So the first term has a coefficient of 1 and it's x cubed and 2y, write it all out fully, 2y to the power 0. So put that all in brackets, 2y to the power 0. The second term is going to have a coefficient of 3. So we've just got to this times by x this goes down by a power x squared times by 2y to the power 1 the next term is going to be have a coefficient of 3 times by let's go down to x times by 2y squared now notice that it's all of this to the power of 1 all of this squared and the next term is going to be all of this cubed so not just 2 with a y and squared. So it's not this 2y squared. Okay, so it's not that. Be careful, it's the whole of this done to a power. Right, let's carry on down here. So we're on to the last term. So it's just 1 times by, and we're now x to the power 0, plus x to the power 1, times by 2y all cubed. Now we're going to simplify that because you wouldn't really write it like this. This is one, that's one. So the first term is just x cubed. Second term is going to be three times by x squared, three x squared times by two y. So plus three x squared times by two y. We'll simplify that again in a moment. The next term is just going to be three x times by 2y all squared. Now 2y all squared will be 4y squared. So times by 4y squared. Then the next term is going to be 1 times by x to the power 0, which is 1. So you've just got 2y all cubed, and 2y all cubed is 8y cubed. So that can be simplified a bit more. x cubed plus 6x squared y plus 12xy squared plus 
y cubed. Now we'll have a look at part b. And part b, we've got this 2x minus 5, all to the power 4. So that means we will be using this row of the expansion. Anytime we've got anything to the power 4, we use that row. So again, we're going to write it all out fully and then simplify it. So I'll have 1 times by 2x all to the power 4. So not just 2x to the power 4, 2x all to the power 4. So we remember we take all of this and you do it to a power. Then that will be times by negative 5 to the power 0. So that's going to become 1 in a moment. Next term plus coefficient is 4 times by 2x cubed times by negative 5 to the power 1. Once you get going, it's fairly straightforward. Next coefficient is 6. 6 times by 2x squared times by negative 5 squared. So remember, the pairs of power should always add up to 4 in this case. Then we have 4 times by 2x to the power 1. And that's going to be times by negative 5 cubed. Then the last term, let's put it over here, is going to be 1 times by 2x to the power 0 times by negative 5 to the power 4. Now, when you get good at this and you practice this, there's lots of these things you don't need to write in. You don't need to write in the power 0 things. You'll probably need to know those and the 1s as well. We'll probably leave those out. Right, but for now, we're going to write everything and then we'll simplify it. So we'll simplify this. Now, 2x to the power 4 is 2 to the power 4, x to the power 4. So that's going to be 16x to the power 4. These are just 1s here. Then the next term, plus, And we're going to have 2x all cubed, which is 8x cubed, times by 4. So let's write that 4 times by 8x cubed. And that's going to get multiplied by negative 5 as well. So just put times negative 5. Then the next term here, that will become 6 times by 4x squared times by negative 5 squared, which is 25. Next term, 4 times by 2x times by negative 5 cubed. Well, that's going to be at minus 125. And then... The last term, um, these are going to become 1, so it's just negative 5 to the power 4, which is going to be positive 625. So final step of simplifying, 16x to the power 4. Then here, 4 times 8 is 32. 32 times by negative 5 is going to be negative 160. So we have minus 160x cubed. Then the next term here, we're going to have 6 times 4, which is 24. And then 24 times by 25 is 600. So I'll have plus 600 x squared. Then the next term, we'll have 4 times 2, which is 8. And then 8 times by 100, or negative 125 is going to be negative 1,000. So negative 1,000 x and then plus 600 m. 25. Okay, so there's the answer highlighted, and our answer should always given be given in its most simple form. So we should simplify everything out before writing our final answer down. Example 2, the coefficient in the x squared term of this expansion, 2 minus 3x all to the or power 3 or cubed is 294. Find the possible values of the constant c. Now we could write the whole expansion out and then look at what we've got in front of the x squared term. But we're going to see if we can just write out the x squared term and use that to equate it to 294. So the x squared term is going to come from when we have the term which is that squared. So it's going to be negative cx all squared. 
Now we need to know what is going to be going on with the two in this term. And remember that the powers will need to add up to, in this case, three. So it was going to be multiplied by the first term to the power one. So we're just using the pattern. So this is only part of the binomial expansion. So we know that if this is squared, that's going to give us the x squared. And then we'll need to work out this part in a moment. But the power here for the two is going to be one. Two plus one is three. Now we need to work out what the coefficient of this would be. We've got Pascal's triangle here. We're doing cubed. So that means it's this row of Pascal's triangle. Right, so the one would be the coefficient when we do two cubed. The three would be the coefficient when we do two squared, because it goes down by a power. This, the three, would be the coefficient when we do two to the power one, or negative cx squared. So three is going to go in front of this here. So it's also going to get times by three. And we know that that is going to give us 294x squared. So let's now multiply this out. So I have three times two, which is six times by, and then this is going to be all squared. So negative c squared is going to be c squared times by x squared is 294x squared. So we can get rid of the x squared. So 6c squared equals 294. We'll divide both sides by 6 to get uh, c squared. And that gives c squared equals 49. So that means that c is going to be plus or minus 7. So there we go. The possible values of the constant c are going to be plus or minus 7. So you should now be able to do exercise 8a on pages 160 to 161 of the textbook.